Hello, friends. Welcome to the Raising Arrows podcast, where we discuss all things large family homeschooling and homemaking. Hello, everyone. I'm Amy Roberts from RaisingArrows.net, and this is the Raising Arrows podcast, and this is episode number 142, Creating Order in Your Homeschool. We are going to talk about tips and tricks for creating more order in your homeschool as you homeschool, things that you can do right now to make homeschooling easier and more efficient and to control a lot of the chaos that often happens in a homeschool day. Before we get started, I want to share with you that this episode of the Raising Arrows podcast is sponsored by Classical Conversations' brand new curriculum, Scribblers at Home, Recipes from Lifelong Learners. And I'll be telling you more about that here in a bit, so stay tuned. All right, so let's just kind of dive in here with a little bit about what your homeschool day might look like and what you can do to help it be a little less chaotic, help your children focus a little bit better, help you focus a little bit better, and keep a nice smooth rhythm going to your homeschool. So first of all, I've talked about this in podcast number 77, Anchor Your Homeschool Day. You need to have kind of a specific start time. The reason I say kind of is because it doesn't have to always start at 9 a.m. every single day, but it needs to start around that. That signals to everyone in the home that school is getting ready to start. They can look at the clock and they can say, oh, I've got five more minutes. Oh, I've got an hour. They know that school starts around a certain certain time. And if you get that stuck into your head and it sticks into your kids' heads, that immediately creates that anchor to your homeschool day. And it helps everybody to kind of settle into a routine. They know school starts at such and such time. I need to be somewhat ready. And so that's one thing that we do. School around here starts at 10 a.m. And you try to get everything done before 10 a.m. that needs to be done so that everybody can come to the table and sit down. In that particular podcast, I do talk about having other anchors and other things that help solidify that routine, but I'll just start with having a specific start time for your homeschool day. That will gain you a lot of traction in creating a day that is more orderly and more routine. For those children who maybe don't read clocks or for moms or kids who are kind of forgetful or a little bit easily distracted, you might want to set a reminder on your phone or an alarm on your Alexa or a timer on your kitchen timer, something that will always go off at that time of day and help the kids who can't read or can't tell time to know that it's time for school. This is particularly helpful if you or your children tend to get caught up in other things prior to the school day and then easily start to let school just slip and not ever make it to the table or to the living room or wherever you're having school. So have that specific start time. Find a way to help you remember and help it become a part of your routine. For us, I don't need to set a timer anymore. School just always starts right around 10 a.m. I have a good routine to my day and I'm always pretty much ready by 10 a.m. Now back a few years ago before we started this very regular start time, I didn't. I did have to set an alarm. I did have to set reminders. I had to I had to get into the habit of starting school at that time. So once you've got that habit down, you don't need to probably continue with the timers and reminders. But initially, if you don't have a habit of starting at a specific time or close to a specific time, then you need to probably have those helpers to help you get started and help your children recognize that this is school time, time to get started with our homeschool day. Another thing you might consider doing, and this will be dependent on your children and the dynamic that is in your household, but you might consider having a seating chart for your kids. If you're in the living room homeschooling your kids, you might want to give them specific places that they need to sit. If they are doing their independent schoolwork all throughout the house, you might want to give them their own independent spaces. This space belongs to Billy. This one belongs to Jimmy. This one belongs to Susie so that your children are less likely to get on each other's nerves or get after each other for being in the other one's space. 
I know in our family, it is not uncommon for everyone to have a favorite chair and several of them have the same favorite chair. And we kind of have to do a seating arrangement, a seating chart so that so-and-so gets the chair on Monday and then the next day somebody else gets the chair. If you're sitting around the dining room table, you might even consider putting together a seating chart that even extends for your meals so that people are sitting in specific places. I do have an example of this on the blog that you can take a look at and and see what we did for many years when it came to putting together a seating chart for meals, which that could also work for your homeschool. Basically what it does is it keeps the calm by keeping kids from arguing over a specific space at the table or a specific chair in the living room or a specific place that they want to sit and do their independent schoolwork. This could be a rotating seating chart. This could be one that is very specified and it never changes. It could be whatever you want it to be. But if this is something you are having trouble with, if this is something that is messing with your school day, it's keeping the calm from being a part of your school day because the kids are nipping at each other about where they're sitting, I would highly consider putting together a seating chart of some sort. It's just one less thing that you have to deal with during the homeschool day. If it's already kind of set in stone and you can say, no, it's Susie's turn to sit here and tomorrow it will be Jimmy's turn to sit at the same spot. It just makes it easier for you as a mom and for them as kids to not have to fight over a spot and to just sit down and get to work. Another thing that will really help you to create order in your homeschool is having your homeschool materials nearby, readily accessible, easy to get to. So if you are homeschooling in the living room, typically, your materials need to be near that living room. If your children are doing their independent schoolwork in their bedrooms, they probably ought to have a crate or something in their bedroom that keeps those materials right there. We homeschool mainly in the dining room. We do go out from the dining room after morning time, but all of their homeschool supplies, their homeschool books, all of that is in the dining room. It's in one place. Everybody knows where it is. Everybody knows where those things need to be returned to because they have a home. You may have heard this called EHAP, which is everything has a place. Keep that in mind when you are considering where your materials for homeschooling need to be. For years and years and years, I homeschooled in the living room because I was nursing babies. I had a homeschool mom basket right next to my chair where I typically was nursing babies so that everything was right there, easily accessible. I could grab it whether I was nursing or not, and I would have everything at my fingertips that I needed to school the children in the living room. When we moved all of that to the dining room here several years ago. Everything is in the dining room. Same thing. I still have a homeschool mom basket. I still have a place where I stack all of that stuff, but it's now in the dining room because it doesn't make sense to have it in the living room anymore because that's not where we typically are. So keep in mind where you are homeschooling, what you need to do that job and how to make it that much easier so you're not racing around all over the place trying to grab up materials. And honestly, I need to tell myself this. I have recently realized that I do not have our homeschooling books in the right place. I used to have a bookshelf in the room that we were schooling in that was specifically for the books that we would be using for that year of homeschooling. So all of the living books, all of the kids' books that they were going to be reading, all of those were easily accessible. I have not done that in several years, and I often find myself scrambling, going through bookshelves, trying to find these books. So I I'm actually working on a system right now that I soon hope to be putting on the blog that you can see how I am organizing those books so that I can find them more easily because I'm, I need to preach this to myself as well. My materials were not nearby and I have lost a lot of time and energy looking for things that could have just been in that area right where I needed them from the very beginning. And this includes pens and pencils and rulers and glue and all of those supplies that you typically use in a homeschool day. Whatever it is that you often use and you don't wanna have to go searching for it, keep it nearby. 
Now, friends, if you are homeschooling children ages four through eight, I want you to listen closely to what I'm about to say. Classical Conversations has introduced an all new resource called Scribblers at Home Recipes from Lifelong Learners. These are step by step activities and easy to follow charts that will help you cultivate a love of lifelong learning in your child through intentional everyday play. So you can find the magic in the mundane as your kitchen becomes a classroom or your backyard becomes a laboratory and your child develops simple learning rhythms that will carry them through life. You can use Scribblers at Home to complement the Classical Conversations Foundations program or you can use it completely on its own. Either way, this new resource will help homeschool parents of little learners create a family environment where habits like playing, praying, and reading come naturally. You can learn more about this really great product at classicalconversations.com forward slash scribblers hyphen arrows. That's classicalconversations.com forward slash scribblers dash arrows. And speaking of those simple learning rhythms, that's the next thing I want you to focus on for creating order in your homeschool. Have an order of events. You have heard me talk about this over and over again. Put your homeschool on autopilot as much as possible. Create a routine, an order of subjects, an order of events that allows you to not even have to think about it anymore and encourage that in your children as well so that they just do the next thing and it doesn't take a lot of mental energy and time for them to figure out what the next thing is. So years ago when we started homeschooling, I would always meet with my kids. We would read from the Bible and we would have a read aloud. It was every single day. It started at approximately the same time. And that was how our homeschool day started. And then they went off to their independent schoolwork. I worked with the little kids and then I moved up through the bigger kids and everybody had an order of how they did things. And they still do, even to this day. We have a much more extensive morning time now that you can learn about on the blog and via this podcast. And the morning time now involves a lot more subjects, but I almost always do those subjects in the same order. And then the kids go to their independent schoolwork, which they also do in the same order every single day. So for instance, my eight-year-old always starts with her handwriting, then she goes to her math, then she does her phonics. Every single day, day in and day out, that is how she does her schoolwork. It is an autopilot thing for her. She does not have to think about it. She knows exactly which workbooks she needs. She gets them out. She goes to work. The reason that she starts with handwriting is so that I can work with her little sister who is just starting to learn how to read and she starts with phonics instead. She actually goes the opposite direction, phonics, math, handwriting, than her eight-year-old sister does and that's what she does every single day. They both know exactly what order everything is in. In fact, you could probably ask every single one of my kids, what order do you do your schoolwork in? And they could tell you the exact order of subjects because they have done it over and over and over over again. In my autopilot homeschooling podcast, which is number 50, you will find step-by-step instruction to actually help your children create this order and help yourself create this order as well. So check out that podcast for more information and more how-tos to help motivate and encourage you and your children to put your homeschool on autopilot and get an order of events to your homeschool day. The last thing I think is imperative to have in your homeschool to create order is to actually keep your kids engaged. Sometimes children get unruly. In fact, most of the time they get unruly when they're either bored or not engaged with what is being taught to them. This may be because the reading material that you're reading from is a little dry and boring, or you're reading it in a monotone, or they're just not really engaged that day and they'd much rather be chewing on their pencil or throwing a pencil at their sister. The way that you keep kids engaged in the material is to not just read through it, not just stand up there and teach, teach, teach. You need to engage them with questions. Ask them questions, leading questions, questions about what you just read, and then offer some commentary. The more you homeschool, the more you are going to learn as a homeschool teacher, and the more you're going to have to offer these little nuggets of wisdom, but I can guarantee you, you already have some nuggets of wisdom to offer. If you run across something in the text that you are reading that you know something extra about, go ahead and share it, even if it means going off track for a little bit. 
just recently when we were reading the parable of the sower, I stopped probably every sentence to talk about the different ground that the sower was planting on. And what do you know about rocky ground, kids? How about when we go visit the mountains? You know, the roots aren't very deep there. You can just pull the plants right out of the ground because they're rocky soil and it's hard for them to get any sort of roots. And we just talked and talked and talked about these different soils. I asked them, do you remember what the four soils were so that they're engaging their little brains and they're engaging with the material? When you talk to your children in this way, when you offer commentary that's interesting, when you ask them questions that keeps them thinking, you are actually going to cut down on how much chaos and noise and altercations are going on around the homeschooling table because they don't have time for that. They're engaging their brains. They're listening to you. You're talking. It's interesting. My kids have told me time and time again that morning time is their favorite homeschooling time. They would much prefer to sit around and have these in-depth discussions about everything they're learning than they would to just have an audio tell them what to think or just read through a book because their minds begin to wonder. Now, absolutely, they need to cultivate that ability to sit through a lecture or to sit through a book and read and stay focused on the page. But that's a learning experience. It's a learning curve. It takes a while. That maturity takes quite some time to cultivate. And so you give them little bits of that, but then you also spend a lot of time discussing. And we talked at length about this in my podcast on discussion-based education. So go back and check that one out as well. That was just recently in podcast number 139. Another way I found to keep kids engaged as well is to have my laptop open while I'm reading or talking about something and then pull up images on Google that helps them to see what we're talking about. We are currently reading in Farmer Boy and it mentioned these air castles that one of the daughters had created out of wheat straw. And of course, my kids have no idea what that is. They've never seen this air castle. And so I explained it to them, but how much better when I I pulled up a picture of one, turned my laptop around and let them see what this was, see one of these air castles hanging from the ceiling. And then they had more questions. They were like, is wheat straw that strong? Well, guess what? I'm the daughter of a wheat farmer. I spent my summers harvesting wheat. Absolutely wheat straw is that strong. So I was able to tell them from personal experience, yes, you can make things out of wheat straw. And then I reminded them how we have ornaments from Germany and those ornaments are made out of wheat straw and they don't break. We put them on the tree every single year. Those kinds of discussions, even though they seem like they're completely off track, are actually what's engaging your children with the information. It's making it come alive. Do not be afraid to get off track explaining something and engaging them with images and photos and conversations about what they're learning because they actually will retain it better If it becomes part of the fiber of a conversation that they had, they see it, they put it in their brains, and they continue to remember that's what an air castle is. It's made out of wheat straw. It was really cool looking. Even better, make something out of wheat straw if you can. All of these things help your child to engage with the material and actually learn more than they ever would if you just simply read through the text and never stopped and never had a conversation about anything. So definitely, if you can, use images from your computer to help them see what it is you are talking about. Hopefully these ideas have given you a great place to start during your next homeschool day to engage your children, to keep the chaos at a minimum, and to help create more order in your homeschool day. Don't forget to check out Classical Conversations, all new resource, Scribblers at Home, Recipes from Lifelong Learners, and consider adding that to your homeschool day for your little ones ages four through eight. If you are a fan of this podcast, I think you will definitely be a fan of that curriculum. Until next time, friends, this is the Raising Arrows podcast, and we will see you back here again.